Well, here's my Pride and Joy, my uh, Pedal Fish 10 kayak from Sea Kayaks. Unfortunately, yesterday I had a little bit of a disaster when my scupper cart pierced the rear scupper hole of my craft, and you can see the uh, tear right there. Halfway across the uh, Clarence River as it was starting to list rather badly, you can imagine I was quite concerned about what uh, was happening. Now I live uh, in a regional area, I don't have access to a professional plastic welder, but I'm going to show you how you can make such repairs yourself. First thing to remember is that modern kayaks are made from a substance called high density polyethylene. Now it's very very important that in uh, undertaking the repair you use exactly the same sort of substance that's high density polyethylene because uh, other plastics and so forth will not adhere to it. So let's see uh, how we do this. So where do you find high density polyethylene or HDPE as it's commonly known? Well thankfully it's everywhere and here we just have a couple of examples. We have here an old uh, chemical bottle. We have just even a humble milk bottle, a vinegar container, there's also shampoo bottles, oil bottles. All sorts of things are made from polyethylene today. Now how do you tell to make sure? Simply turn the container upside down and you'll see here the letters HDPE for high density polyethylene underneath a triangle with the number 2. Now, it'll have one or the, uh, the other, as is the case with uh, this container, it has both. So that shows it's the correct substance for us to undertake our repair. The tools we're going to use are quite simple. You see here we have a heat gun, uh, I have a soldering iron, that's a gas powered soldering iron, it has a little shaping tool on it, uh, and a Stanley knife. Now, uh, others have done uh, similar repairs using either electric soldering iron or even a cigarette lighter. Uh, and a screwdriver, although I'd be very, very careful using a, a naked flame for risk of burning a hole through uh, through your craft. So let's see where we go from here. So you'll notice using the Stanley knife, I've simply cut a strip out of uh, an empty chemical container. You can see the strip there. Now very importantly, before you start working with it, clean it thoroughly with uh, some methylated spirits and also make sure you clean uh, around the tear or the crack or whatever you're repairing on your uh, craft with methylated spirits as well. Now if you've never done this before, it's fairly important that you, uh, you have a bit of a, a practice run before you endeavour to attack your kayak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, cut a small uh, tear in another container that I have uh, to try and sort of replicate a little bit of what we have uh, on the yak in the scupper hole. So just making a bit of a bit of a hole and a tear there. A bit of a jagged edge off the side. And what we're going to do is uh, attempt to re repair that. Okay, I'm quite happy with uh, with that. A bit of a crack so you should be able to see that quite clearly. What you do is you take your uh, the welding rod you've made, the strip of uh, polyethylene, high density polyethylene that uh, we cut out just a moment ago. We're going to use our heat gun now to soften the plastic. If you're using a naked flame, you've got to be very careful. It will catch a light very, very easily. That's why we don't recommend it. Uh, you do use uh, a, a non-flammable heat source. So simply what we're going to do now is heat the surface of our container and heat the surface of our uh, strip here. Just start heating the strip up by moving the air back and forward in, a, in an even way. And you see it starting to soften. Now as it gets to the temperature where we want to work with it, you'll notice that it begins to turn from opaque to quite clear. In fact, just to make it a little bit, of, a little bit easier, a bit more even, I'm just going to use this piece of board. And show you exactly what's happening. And if you can see that, you can see that uh, a piece of plastic there has gone totally clear. 
So that's basically ready to use. Now the other thing we need to do, of course, is we need to heat up the area that we want to adhere the plastic to. Effectively what we're doing is combining or welding the uh, two materials together. Just heat that up. Same thing, you begin to see that that is starting to go uh, clear. And we'll just put a bit more heat on our strip again. And you might see that our crack there, the plastic around it, has gone totally clear. Just want to make sure that I uh, strip is long enough to cover the entire area of repair. Okay, so here we have our two materials. Now I'm going to just simply overlay that and gently, just using a screwdriver, carefully put that into place. basically what uh, we want to do to this point. Now we haven't quite covered the uh, entire split there. You might see we still have a couple little holes. So uh, we've got a couple of other little strips here and we're just going to go through the same process. Turn that heat up a little bit more. And you can see that uh, plastic now starting to slowly go clear. Same thing, little heat back to the area that we're uh, welding to. Heat that a little bit. And let's carefully just lay that across. Okay, so we've got our uh, soldering iron nice and hot. And what we begin to do now is simply start melting those uh, plastics in. Just slowly, slowly once again effectively welding the two together and you can make quite a reasonably neat joint as we uh, bind all those strips to the actual container And uh, hopefully we will have quite a good repair to that crack. And so we've just finished uh, working that with our uh, soldering iron, just gradually working it in. As you can see, it actually uh, the, the high density polyethylene, the plastic, will actually melt, and then you can just work it into the areas that uh, you need to cover and along the edges to actually weld it in to the item that we're repairing. So what we're going to do now is uh, test our weld and we'll do that by filling our container with water. I filled it quite full because I want to get uh, maximum pressure on it and uh, there you can see 
we have a totally watertight seal. So I guess now it's uh, time to have a go at the kayak. Okay, so using some methylated spirits, let's first of all now thoroughly uh, clean the area around uh, the damage on our kayak so we can get a good solid world. I've set up a table with all the tools that I'm going to need. I want everything ready at hand as we're doing the job, so hopefully uh, we'll have a seamless procedure. You'll note, of course, that uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I'm using a gas-powered soldering iron, so the, as a matter of safety, the methylated spirits has gone back on the shelf and well out of the way. All right, so let's begin. We'll start by uh, heating up the uh, tear and uh, we'll have here our strip ready to, to weld on. Okay, so we've got our crack there nice and uh, warm, and I'm just now moulding in the first strip. Push it down nice and firm with your uh, screwdriver or whatever blade you're using. Let's just trim that with a Stanley knife. And then we'll put the next strip on, following exactly the same process. So what we're going to do now is get ready to uh, to build up the uh, the layers and to add uh, strength back to our scupper hole, as well as repairing that tear. So same process as before, just gently heating up the repair, and of course heating up the strip until it goes nice and clear. by directing the uh, heat gun into the scupper hole and across our repair strip, we can sort of kill two birds with one stone virtually. Once again, let's carefully place that new strip over the old. Just press it down and just keep going like that until you are satisfied that uh, you've got a good and strong patch in place. 
Now like before, we use our soldering iron, and this is where we begin to carefully, very carefully, weld our strips into the hull of our craft. Uh, just blending the two together, whilst being very careful not to uh, put a further hole or damage into the craft itself. And then we'll just keep working at that for a while uh, until we're satisfied with our result. Okay, so I've been adding strips and uh, slowly working it in for probably about 10 minutes now and I'm relatively uh, happy that we've got a good, solid and strong patch. So what I'm going to do now is turn the craft uh, over the other way and put it the right way up and we will uh, attempt to um, to repair the uh, the other side or the top end of this crack. Okay, so now we're approaching the uh, scupper hole from the top and uh, we're going to endeavour to uh, work that top uh, piece of the strip in, the plastic that you can see there and if need be add a couple of other strips and uh, work that in the same way as we did uh, on the reverse side. Okay, so there's our uh, completed uh, weld. We have several layers uh, merged in together there. And for our next step, we're going to uh, water test it and see how successful we were. And we're going to do that simply initially by just filling the, uh, the scupper hole as far as we can with uh, water. And then obviously we'll uh, have to put it out in the river and give it a, uh, a genuine test. Okay, so I've just taken my uh, P10 for a, a test run now on a rather windy day in a rather choppy lake. So now for the moment of truth, let's see uh, how our repair went. So let's just open the, the uh, hatch. I don't know if you can uh, see that in there, but folks, there is not a drop of water. So uh, there you have it. We declare that a uh, success. Just goes to show you, uh, you can make your own repairs. Save yourself a couple of hundred bucks toward the bait. Happy kayaking. Cheers.